peace in the Middle East will only be achieved through a major conflict involving regional power brokers, former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev has suggested. Writing on his Telegram channel, Medvedev, who now serves as Deputy Chairman of Russia's Security Council, weighed in on the escalating tensions between Israel and Iran, as well as their partners and allies in the region and beyond. The knot is tightening in the Middle East. Sorry for the innocent lives lost. They are but hostages of a disgusting state. The USA, Medvedev stated, adding, it's clear to everyone that a full-scale war is the only way to a shaky peace in the region. His comments come in the wake of the assassination of Hamas political leader Ismail Haniyeh in a rocket strike in the Iranian capital Tehran on Wednesday. Hamas accused Israel of orchestrating the attack and warned it would pay the price for the heinous crime. Israel has neither denied nor confirmed involvement, but Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu boasted that his country had delivered crushing blows to Hamas, the Houthis and Hezbollah, militant Islamic groups with close ties to Iran operating in Gaza, Yemen and Lebanon, respectively. Meanwhile, Iran also blamed Israel, adding that the US, Israel's main ally, shared responsibility for what it called a heinous act of terrorism. US, Iran also blamed Israel, adding that the US, Israel's main ally, shared responsibility for what it called a heinous act of terrorism, Lebanon, respectively. Meanwhile, Iran also blamed Israel, adding that the US, Israel's main ally, shared responsibility for what it called a heinous act of terrorism. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, however, insisted that Washington was not aware of or involved in the assassination of Haniyeh. The killing of a senior Hamas official came after Israel confirmed that it had carried out a strike on Beirut, Lebanon, that killed Hezbollah commander Fouad Shukur. West Jerusalem has insisted he was behind the strike on a soccer field in the Israeli-occupied Allah of the Lions Den Camp, located right here in Jacksonville, Florida. Before I begin, I want to say Ka Halayim, La Yahawa, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Ha Kodash, Ma'amaf. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and the elders. Shalom to you, Akim, and and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Um, as you know, there's a um, war brewing up in the in the what they call the Middle East between um Israel um they call them the is not Israelis <laughs> uh those Khazars over there in the land of, of Israel um brewing brewing up this war because of the lies that they inherited all right they believe that uh let me get that real quick. Netanyahu and uh, and whoever you know the, them over there in the land, dwelling in the land right now. They believe that they're the children of the Lord. Well, because of that misbelief, it's leading them into direct war. All right. Because they feel like um, the prophecies are happening now for them. That's why you have the Gaza War. You know, because the, the scriptures say once the Israelites get into that land, they're going to dominate and take over the whole world. But they misunderstand the prophecies. They have their fake Messiah. They have, um, we talked about it at camp last week. Even in 1948, the establishment of those Khazars in that land is not legit. 
All right. So they're they're in place just for prophecy. That's why they're over there. All right. So um, let me get this real quick. <clears throat> this is uh Jeremiah fifteen sixteen and nineteen. O Yahweh, my strength and my fortress, and my refuge in the day of trouble of affliction. The Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth, man. So these these heathens are gonna come to the Lord and to to the Israel, the the real Israelites in the kingdom. We ain't gonna have to um go to war with them. It's gonna be total annihilation if they do. We're gonna have full dominance over these nations. Um, and the scriptures also say once the true Israelites are in that land the world shall study war no more well we're in the time of World War 3 a hot war which is going to start off with Armageddon the Armageddon the gathering of all those troops over in the Middle East over there around Ukraine all for a direct uh, no longer proxy wars, but direct wars between these nations, these major nations that carry nukes, thus ushering in the prophecies of our God, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. So it says, What? And they shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit, right? So Esau has inherited lies man and through that lies they've done what this is Obadiah 1 um, and 3 it says the pride of thine heart well let's get this because it says about the Gentiles right which means the foreigners which goes into the goyim or the strangers or the nations all right um you know the heathens Obadiah 1 and 1 the vision of Obadiah thus saith Yahweh the power concerning Edom we have heard a rumor of Yahweh from Yahweh and an ambassador is sent among the heathens arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle all right so we're we're at battle against that nation Esau in the spirit and the Lord is going to um build build up the battle against them physically all right so that's what this is all about now it says verse 2 behold I have made thee small among the heathen thou art greatly despised man the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee see that they got pride in thinking that they're the children of God they got pride in thinking that the Lord doesn't love us when the Lord chastened us and put us in slavery. They got prideful. Even thought to, to think of themselves as God and to rule over the congregation of the Israelites in the north over here in America. So they think that they're the children of the Lord. But the Lord said, what? The pride of thine heart, those lies, those lies that they inherited and passed down to their children's children. Thou that dwellest in the clefts or the rocks, they think that's their safety. To run, in the ancient times, that was their safety to run into Petra, into the caves. And they're going to go back there again. All right. So it says, um, who's that's whose habitation is high that saith in his heart who shall bring me down to the ground well shit they definitely being brought down all right so these things are happening upon the earth well also right here you have um let's go to this ecclesiastes three and one to everything there is a season all right, and we're in the time of the seasons changing, man. This, you know, the pages are turning according to prophecy. You can look at prophecy like seasons, which the Most High controls the seasons. He controls the prophecies. To everything there is a season 
and a time to every purpose under heaven. So the, why? Because um, there's a there's a purpose. All right. There's a purpose, man. Let me get that real quick. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you. See Revelation seven, the Lord has uh, promised to seal His elect and to deliver us, and to bring judgment on those nations. Here is the faith and the patience of the saints, that they're going to go into captivity. That's what that's what the purpose of all this is to give praises to the name of Yahweh Bashim Shai. He said he will get his name praised in the earth and his son Yahweh Shai and his his people. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say if Yahweh, thoughts of peace and not of evil. See, the Lord has thought evil towards us at one time because we were being wicked. Now the Lord is saying, I'm thinking thoughts of peace towards you, man. All right, so there's a time of peace and there's a time of war. And not of evil to give you an expected end. See, that's the purpose, to give unto the elect they're expected and to deliver us in the midst of destruction all right so to everything there is a season and a time under heaven verse ecclesiastes 3 and uh, 8 a time to love see and a time to hate see the lord loved us then he hated us he said, i loved you saith the lord but ye have said wherein has thou loved us All right, that was love the Lord delivering us out of Egypt that was love the Lord having mercy on us and feeding us and taking care of us building us up to be a nation swaddling us out of Egypt as a newborn baby that was rejected taking us in as a daughter you know as a nation that's love giving his only begotten son for us Joining us unto the, his son, Yahweh Shai, as a nation. That's love, man. A time of love and a time to hate. Now, here's the point. A time of war and a time of peace. See, now we're in a time of war. This is it's about to be war on this earth. But why was there a time of peace? You know, there's never been peace in America. But it was a little quiet and give time for... um brothers to come into the truth that's revelations chapter 7 let's get that real fast then we'll get to this article revelation 7 and 1 and after these things i saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth nor on the sea nor on any tree that's why things are heating up now around the world israel going to war Look at that. Hezbollah says it launched dozen, dozens of rockets at Israel. Several impacts reported. August 4th. That was, what's that? Yesterday, this morning. All right. Hezbollah and Hamas over in Lebanon and Iran. <clears throat> there was a direct strike on Iranian soil at one of his um, gen generals of Hamas and then they took out Hezbollah leader, you know. So it's it's um, Netanyahu that's dragging America into this war. That's why I kept playing that part over and over again, where Iran stated, a reporter stated that Iran is reporting that um, our uh, United States is trying to clear themselves out of the situation like we had we had no idea this was happening but either way they're going to be drawn and pulled into the damn war through israel you know uh, netanyahu and them all right so that's prophecy they said yeah america is behind it that's what <laughs> this is what iran saying so they're calling for direct strikes and, and attacks and they put up the flag of revenge in iran in the Muslim Brotherhood and it, they're talking about a new level of extreme direct strikes starting today Monday the same day that hurricane hitting uh, the south by the east coast of America 
So while you had Kamala Harris and the booty shaking demon on stage getting loose, I forgot her name. She was up there. Everybody was talking about that. But the whole time, Netanyahu and them was getting uh, busy over there with uh, Hezbollah and Hamas <laughs> starting off the war. <clears throat> So because this was an attack, an assassination that was done on Amer on Iranian soil, that's like somebody doing that here in America f from another country. They're going to retaliate. If not, they're going to look embarrassed. So none of these things can happen unless the Lord, uh, Yahweh, commissions it and tells the angels to come down here and bring it to pass. So the angels are getting busy. And his war is heating up because the Lord is aiming to deliver us. Just like in the time of childbirth. Nine months, as the scriptures say. You get contractions. And Yahweh is right there like the doctor, physician, ready to deliver us. Alright? When the time comes, when that moment is here, just like in the hospital, you, the doctor will deal with you, talk to you, build a rapport with, you, with the woman. And then when that moment to deliver is here, that doctor is right there. Remember, on, remember on Bill Cosby here run, <laughs> here run, here run and go. I gotta go deliver a baby. That's your house shot. When that moment comes and it's time for us, we cry out to be delivered, like in Revelations um twelve. When we, you know, when we did in Egypt, and in the Roman Empire, the Lord's gonna do the same thing now to deliver us so so now after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth nor on the sea nor on any tree get to the point verse 3 saying hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our power in their forehead man see that that's love. So the Lord created seasons of prophecy. And now the season that we're moving into is war. And it's been held back so the elect can wake up. All right. And the Lord is sending his mighty angels down, giving them orders. That's right. You know? <clears throat> There you go. This is um, Tobit 12 and 15. I am Raphael, which is one of the four archangels of Yahweh, one of the seven holy angels, which present the prayers of the saints and which go in and out before the glory of the Holy One. So the Lord sent his holy angels to bring in the plagues. So let's get it. We went over this last week. Let's get that real fast. So I'm going to get um, this real quick before I read this article. All right. Uh, it should be 15. This is uh, Revelations 15 uh, and 7. And one of the four angels gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of Yahweh who liveth forever and ever so that time coming we in that we in that time to where the most high gonna send his angels and commission them from heaven to bring the judgments upon the earth and to push these nations into war all right so now let's 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 read about this article of what's happening today and we may hear more about about it as it increases throughout the day. And Iran has been known for its kind of bluff strikes. It's just like, all right, leave me alone. Showing their um, stoicism when some, when their one of their generals is killed or something like that. They're like, yeah, we good. It's like chess. Well, let's see their response now. All right, you see Medvedev. Of Russia is calling for war in the Middle East 
to bring about peace. So when they're talking peace, sudden destruction shall come. So let's read this article. It says, Hezbollah says it launched dozens of rockets at Israel. Several impacts reported. All right. So that's what's, uh, you know, and Hezbollah got so many rockets, man. It, it would tear um, the Iron Dome system apart if they link up with Iran and other nations of the Muslim Brotherhood. And then you got David Sling, and they got another one. All right. This is Hezbollah says it launched dozens of Katyusha rockets at Israel. The the Iran backed uh, group says its latest attack, right? Because they call them a terror group, but uh, I looked online and it was this reporter. She was over there giving a report, you know, of course, Esau. She was over there giving a report, Blondie, right? And she was saying, um, as she reported, she was like, yeah, the terrorist militia, ter the militia, you know, talking about uh, Hezbollah. And this, the, the crowd snapped on her, was like, yo, don't call them that. You're not allowed to call them that. They are freedom fighters. They're like, oh, snap. Just like they called us a militia. Our people, rebels, savages, thug, thuggies, right? Our people will fight back. All right. So, like Nat Turner um, or the Black Panthers. Has, it says Hezbollah says it has launched dozens of Katyusha rockets at Israel. The Iran backed terror group says its latest attack on Mashav Beit Hillel is in response to Israel's attack on Kafar Kela and Dair Zeriani in Lebanon, Sish, which it claims injured civilians right so they had an attack on Lebanon today as well many of the projectiles were intercepted by the Iron Dome system so the, uh, and there was also attack on um, Israel Israeli local authority says several impacts were recognized by whatever that place is the Yenet Yisrael net I guess news site reports fires broke out in the area but no real damage, right? But they, that judgment day is coming for them, man. All right? Uh, according to the scriptures. So these things are heating up on the earth, man. Um, let me read this one real quick. They, they're provoking Iran. All right, Netanyahu. Um, and then you got the Democrats stoking up a war because if there's a war the Democrats basically stay in power or it'll be chaos that they can hand over if Trump wins hand it over to Trump say hey this you gotta deal with August 4th as P as Prime Minister Security Chiefs I don't know if PM it could be Parliament or something but anyway the PM Security chiefs meet on likely Iran ta attacks. Israel said mulling over preventative actions. So they could do preemptive strike. Jordan's FM foreign minister urges end to escalation. So they call it for peace. After meeting Iranian counterpart in Tehran, Netanyahu said de decided not to seek ties with Saudi Arabia before the U.S. elections. Ooh -wee. There you go, pulling Saudi Arabia in the midst. All right, so um, what was that? I'm going to get this scripture too. All right, um, I'm going to add this part back into the video because uh, my phone, was, I don't know, my app just cut off, so I'm going to cut this and 
uploaded. But I did this lesson around three in the morning, so it might be uploaded around seven now. Um, but anyway, Jeremiah forty nine and twenty. Therefore, hear the counsel of Yahweh. See, this is the counsel and the judgment from Yahweh once again, his counsel that he has taken against Edom. So these things are determined upon Edom. Just like the Lord determined judgments upon us in uh, Daniel chapter 9, 25, the Lord has judgments that are determined upon Edom. And his purposes that he had purposed against the inhabitants of Teman, so basically those Edomites. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out all right so the least of the flock is those proxy nations which would be like israel or um iran you know the major nations would be russia america and it they, did and china they're the ones that's going to get drawn out from hiding into this war all right so it says, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. They're going to be drawn into the war. Surely he shall make her their habitations desolate with them. Whew. All right, so that's the goal that the Most High has. Look at the topic. War is the only way to peace in the Middle East from Russian president, former Russian president. All right. Medvedev has been very outspoken lately <laughs> on his war plans. First Thessalonians 5 and 1. Remember, to everything there is a season. So we know that this season is the time of war. But that don't mean the end is yet. The end of that season is, but it's the beginning of it. First Thessalonians 5 and 1. But of the times and seasons. See, to everything there is a time and a season. Brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, so cometh as a thief in the night. So people going to think themselves to be in good case, and even then shall evils grow. Wars are growing upon the earth. Judgment. For when they shall say peace and safety, see they're pushing for peace and safety in the Middle East, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape, man. So it's gonna be like contractions, just catch them off guard. Boom. It's gonna happen. The baby gonna be here. Talks of it, the baby should be here any day. Nine months deep into the the, the labor. And it's time to get out of here. It's time for the judgment to come. That's like a baby. Like a breach ready to fall. It says, uh, But ye brethren are not in darkness, man. So if you know this truth and you're waiting for the prophecies and you see everything happening and you're watching, you're not in darkness. If you're in the spirit of the truth. That that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light. And the children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of the darkness, of the lies. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. All right? So basically being circumspect, you know? But watching the prophecies. Clearly, too. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. See? Think themselves to be in good case. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. And that goes with the prophecy of Ezekiel 38. All of them dwelling without walls uh, in safety. It's like a false sense of safety for everyone, except for the elect. We dwell over here with, without walls, but our safety is in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. So that's why Russia is going to come up against it. So when Russia comes up against this place, he's also going to be coming up against the apple of the Lord's eye. That's why judgment going to fall on them too. Right, and that's what that guy Hasad from Sakari, he's going off, don't understand the scriptures. But he said, ye brethren are not in the darkness. You understand. 
that Russia's not going to go to war with us in the kingdom. They time, according to Revelation 20, is talking about now, where Armageddon's kicking up, where Russia's being deceived and led into this war, drawn out. All right. Um. So now let's get to this point. Uh, verse 8 but let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith that's what we should be doing in these times and love and for an helmet the hope of salvation man hoping for that salvation from what's coming for Yahweh have not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Yahweh Shai two different paths one towards destruction and wrath and the other towards salvation so there you go Joel 3 and 1 for behold in those days and in the day when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem the elect of Israel all right it says what I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Yahweh Shapat, the most high's judgment the most high's wrath where the Lord is going to judge these nations and their armies over in the Middle East near Ukraine all those areas all right the valley of Kidron and will plead with them there for my people so the Lord is going to judge them the word plead means to judge and that's what the Lord said. What? He, this my son shall rebuke the inventions of those nations. And will plead. That's like on the movie Matrix. Remember with Neo? And he's like, no. <laughs> and the bullets just. <laughs> All right. Then you had. um, Was that Brightburn? Yeah, Superman, Kalal. All of these are faint stories and hints at Yahweh Shah. All right, he's going to rebuke the inventions, all the missiles, everything. And for my inheritance, so he's going to do it for what? I will plead with them there for my people and for my inheritance, Israel, for whom they have scattered among the nations and have parted my land. All right? So the Lord never forgot that, that what they did to us. So that's why these things are happening. All right. Um, so when they call for peace, sudden war gonna come. Just in Iranian media reports, in the coming hours, the world will witness ex extraordinary scenes and very important developments. I might make this the thumbnail. Hey very important I mean that's prophecy these are historical times that's what he's saying all right I think I'll use this as a backdrop that's from today over there in Lebanon allegedly so it says here um see that's why Revelations 20 goes hand in hand with this, uh, Ezekiel 38 because these are this is the war in these last days with Russia Gog and Magog all right as that war kicks off over in the middle east and around ukraine around the world eventually russia is going to say i will the most i can put the thought in russia's mind to go ahead and exact revenge or preemptive strike on this place of babylon All right, Revelation 16 and 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. All right. Get that one better. That's from today. Those are missiles. They're like stars, right? Um, But I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. So they came out of Europe. All right, these elites that are manipulating and choosing both dogs in the fight 
and out of the mouth of the beast, all right, um, NATO, the war hawks that are pushing for this war, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, man, the Roman Empire, uh, now, um, Roman Catholic Church, for they are the spirits of devils, right? Deception, deceiving, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of the Almighty. So that's what this is about. Ezekiel 38 is talking about that great day of Yahweh, where he's going to judge and um, cripple all these nations and destroy uh, America. For they, right, for verse 15, Behold, I come as a thief, blessed is he. See, he's coming as a thief, meaning unexpectedly, man. These things are kicking off. And people are like, this it, this it? Oh, that's not it? All right, cool, let me go back into the world. <laughs> Behold, I come as a thief, blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. So you can't just watch. You got to keep your garments as well. You got to be in the truth. You got to teach you got to keep the laws to the best of your ability be moral and brotherly and keep the laws to your akim and your family all right and be truthful to your how about your that's keeping your garments and keeping the laws to the best of your ability behold i come as a thief blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame so you'll be you don't want to be like some of these camps and some of these people out here that have diverted off the path of truth followed after money guns you know chasing after the women bringing that into the truth not have wrong with having wives i'm talking about like having them out there when you're teaching everything you're not supposed to do strippers at the passover so on and so on iuic you already know what they into they're saying jesus instead of yahweh so they're walking naked don't even know it and it says, some shall await to everlasting life, some, some shall await to shame and content. When, every, when all eyes can see it together, when it's happening, they're going to realize they were wrong. That's wisdom of Solomon chapter 5. It says, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armagadwan, which means mountain or gathering of the the, the troops of the world man they all gonna be gathering in the east gathering around ukraine gathering around the valley of kidron israel iran all these places for war all right so that's the place where some believe and i believe also we're gonna see russia get busy not just in ukraine but over in the middle east so, um, let me get this real quick. What scripture I just got? That was, uh, yeah, Revelation 16. Let's get, uh, something to go with that real quick. Joel 3. Um, let's get Revelation 20. Revelation 27. And when the thousand years were expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. All right, that's talking about that dragon once again, the Roman Empire that was um, rebirthed or the Renaissance period rebuilt uh, in the 1400s. All right, so um, now. And shall go out to deceive the nations. I just read that same precept that matches up with it, Revelation 16. The devil shall go out to deceive the nations. To bring them to the great day of the Lord, Armageddon. Right? And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog, Russia. That's the, that's the, the reason... It mentions Russia right here because that's the leader of these nations. All right, not financially it's going to be China, but as far as the war and the prophecies, 
Russia. All right. Uh, it said, "Be thou a guard, a guard unto the other nations, to gather them to gather to battle. The number of whom is as the sand of the sea." And they went up on the breadth of the of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about. So the camp of the saints is anywhere we camped at. And being in America, is where the Israelites are camped at, and the Lord said, "What? The angels of Yahweh by Shimei was shy and campeth around them that fear him." All right, and where we're at, we're encamped there, and the angels are going to be encamped around us as well. So when they come up against this place, um, you know, the Lord's going to deliver and show his power by delivering the children of Israel out of this place, which is bad for these nations. Because after that, they're going to get in line, get in order. Under Yahweh by Shema Shai. Get down or lay down. Alright, so it's going to happen. And they went up on the breadth of the earth. So Armageddon is, is going to happen. And it compassed the camp of the saints at about. World War Three is going to happen. And the beloved city. And fire came down from Yahweh out of heaven and devoured them. Alright, so they, yeah, they're going to surround the land of Israel as well, but. It's talking about the city, meaning New Jerusalem, the elect here. We're going to need help getting out of here, the hopeful elect. The believers, we, we, we're going to need help getting out of here quick from what's coming. Because it's going to be unexpectedly. And fast. All right. Revelations 11 and 14. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe coming quickly, man. It's coming quickly, but it's still not here yet. All right, so that means the Lord is still dealing with us, building us, chastising us, preparing us for Yahweh's preparing us for Yahweh Shai, and Yahweh Shai is preparing us for Yahweh and for Himself, and Yahweh is preparing us for Yahweh Shai and Himself. All right, so they're team working and building us up. That's the important part. The Lord said he set the bounds of these nations uh, to the children of Israel. So their rulership ends when the Lord exalts us. And that's the time we're in, man. So we should be joyful. He said we shall laugh at destruction. Matthew 24 and 6. And ye shall hear of, war of wars and rumors of wars. And we're hearing about it through the unicorn and through the internet. YouTube so we're hearing of those wars and rumors of wars see that ye be not troubled alright so we're not supposed to be troubled we're supposed to be in the spirit and occupied in prophecy and watching but not emotionally distraught by it and walking around sad and shit and panicking for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet man see the end our deliverance is not yet, but it's at the door. But it's still not yet. All right. For nations shall rise up against nations. See, that's just like the sea and the raves roaring against each other. Right? So lucky. And for um, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places, man. So you got that happening upon the earth and more famine is coming more pestilence they're talking about another one and earthquakes are happening in diverse places different places all these are the beginning of sorrows but the end is not yet though so let's get this real quick i'm gonna end it with this one habakkuk 2 it says uh in one no verse three for the vision is yet there you go the end is not yet but for the vision is yet for an appointed time see that that moment that that day when the destruction is going to happen but at the end it shall speak we in the end man the prophecies are happening but it's still not the end of the end yet <laughs> all right we ain't reached the tail end yet 
So at the end, it shall speak and not lie, man. See, it's going to be true. Ezekiel 38, Revelation 20, Revelation 16, Joel. I think chapter 2 it was. And, and Re Re Romans 3 and 3. Let, yea, yea, let Yahweh be true, but every man a liar, man. Anybody that goes against this truth, they're going to be confounded and shown to be liars. You see that? And the Lord said, no liar. He said, liars shall have their part in the lake of fire as well. So those that love and speak of a lie, man, telling people to teach with their head covered, telling people they can teach with guns out there, telling people they can teach uh, with edge ups and shit, telling people they can teach Jesus, the name of Jesus and shit, um, bringing strippers to the damn Passover, making money, $500 off of people here and there for, to, just to give them counseling and the truth, all this madness, Sakari, IUIC. Well, they got to stand on them lies, man. IUIC, the MOTB, but they teach that it's a, a embargo or the name of Jesus, Christianity. Uh, ISUPK, their lies, they, they teach falsehoods about the MOTB as well. But when that last prophecy shows up, that's why the Lord said, what? The end is not yet. Because that, that main hour of temptation has to come upon all the world. It's a financial, spiritual, economical um, trial that's going to come on the whole earth. Where they're going to have to make a choice to be owned or not. Who they're going to be owned by? Yahweh? Or are you going to take the path that leads towards his wrath? That's what Esau heading. The blind shall lead the blind right into the damn ditch, into darkness, into the destruction. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. It's going to be true. Though it tarry, wait for it. See, the end is not yet, but that moment is going to happen. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. All right, so with that, I'm going to end it there and say, hey, man, let's keep watching the prophecy, staying in the spirit, growing. And that's the focus, man. All the tree, all the tree's focus should be is to grow, to blossom, and to stand strong, and to be shade to others, and to soak up the sun, and to be what is created to be next to the river where it's made to dwell, which is to soak up all the nutrients of the scriptures, and the Lord will gain the harvest. The Lord will pluck from the tree. All right? So, and uh, root up the tree to plant it where it should be. All right? With that, I'm going to end this. Uh, shalom.